Hey, what's up, Grinders? This is Dan Gasper here with TJ Swarich, and uh, it's another FanDuel Friday. Uh, coming to you to talk about uh, the Friday night's 14-game slate, I believe it is. We got one one game starting a little bit earlier. I know this is pretty much a first look for me. I'm, I'm getting a little bit later of a start. How about for you, TJ? Yeah, first look for me as well, and that's how I like doing it on these FanDuel Fridays. Give people a peek behind the curtain on kind of what our process looks like, our our mindsets. And we have an interesting slate today because we have some concentrated ownership going to some pitchers. But uh, there's really not a one top guy on the board today. And so it's going to be very interesting to dive into this slate today and uh, see what we can find. Yeah, good good call on ownership there. I will note it's early in the day. I haven't done manual adjustments yet, so this is all just what the the plate IQ model spitting out for us here in terms of projected ownership. Honestly, not overall overly surprising. Some of these guys that we're seeing popping, if I if I sort by projected own here, uh, mainly because it's just a dollar thing, right? Like Lucas Giolito, eight eight, Aaron Ashby, sixty eight hundred. Um, so those are kind of why those guys are gravitating towards the top to start, even though, you know, there's not a huge difference in projection between them and, you know, the Zach Wheelers of the world or even the Charlie Mortons of the world who he's been dominating. I would expect his ownership, projected ownership to, to kind of go up. Um, so talk to me about those two guys uh, that are currently at top and Lucas Giolito and Aaron Ashby. If they stay in that range, is that something you're, you're looking to get on board with or, or would you like to look elsewhere? Yeah, the a- Ashby, if he go- uh, pushes the 20% range, I, uh, I'm i probably going to want to get off of that a little bit. I could see his going down. I think we're going to see some guys like uh, Blake Snell's ownership, I think, is going to go up quite a bit throughout the day. People always want to play uh, Blake Snell for some reason. And I, ne- I never really do. But uh, um, Snell's always a guy that picks up uh, ownership, and especially today when uh, he's projected well, I think that's going to be – Something that uh, finds its way up there as well. And I honestly think on today's slate, like a guy like Giolito, who looks great in a great matchup. I mean, he's struggled a bit a few games ago, but um, he, the price looks great. His projection looks great. The matchup is great, but not as great, not as good as the ownership suggests in comparison to everybody else. So to me, this is one of going to be one of those slates that you can just plop five to 10 different pitchers in a pile and all of them have a very similar chance of uh, being the top guy. And so if the ownership's going to be concentrating on a couple of them, I'm going to be looking to go another way. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I largely agree with that. I mentioned Charlie Morton, who um, really struggled to start the season and now has double-digit strikeouts in three of his last five games. He'll certainly grab some some ownership. Uh, Giolito has been kind of like not great lately and then finally put up a good start um in his last start so Gilito, obviously the matchup's excellent um, but i'm i'm pretty much in agreement with you here that if these guys are gonna kind of be the chalky options of the bunch on the 14 game slate they're probably okay fades or you know try to look to, to some of these other guys you mentioned blake snell be interesting to see where he you know finally ends up um other high and upside I- guys would be like I think the, in the uh, Snell Giolito range specifically, the guy yeah. I'm going to be looking to go to to kind of pivot off of them is going to be uh, Zach Gallen. Tariq okay. Skubal is very cheap, even though he's kind of struggled lately. But it's a lefty against the White Sox. I'm going to wait one more uh, one more matchup, I think, before I start trying to get back on that train. So uh, Zach Gallen's seen a huge price decrease. And he'll probably pick up some ownership, but I think he'll be the lowest owned between the Giolito Snell Gallon pairing. And so I think he's going to be the one that I uh, want to use as a pivot today. Yeah, um, I agree with that he'll be the, the lowest owned of that trio. Scuba was the guy that I was going to mention in, in terms of struggling lately. Man, he was great to start the season, too. Just awesome. Um, don't mind taking shots there if you just want to be the, the first person back to, to kind of his, his reemergence if it happens. Uh, you mentioned it, not ideal matchup, um, but he's always been a, a pretty high strikeout guy. Um, and those are the guys we want to take shots on. We're not, we, we don't want to take uh, take shots on Tyler Anderson of the world, Reed Detmers of the world. Um, although Tyler Anderson has been good, uh, he's typically just not a guy that I'm going to play because he doesn't strike a whole lot of people out. 
Um, you can see here by his game logs, he's been doing pretty decent. So I wonder, I, I do wonder if Tyler Anderson will get ownership just because it's against the Cubs. Um, but I'm not, I, I just can't do guys that don't have high strikeout rates. It's, uh, I, it's just not in my book, uh, especially for 9K. Not, not something I can touch. Uh, I think again, if you're if you're looking to get a little crazy on top, it's more like a, even like a Nestor Cortez. Um, not great matchup. Don't love it by any stretch of the imagination. But hey, at least he's shown us some strikeout upside. Um, and I don't think you have to get too crazy today at pitcher because, like, I think we will yeah. see. It's a big slate. We're going to see upwards of 20 to 25, 30% ownership on guys like Giolito and maybe a couple others. But outside of that, we're not going to see much at all. So like Wheeler, Bassett, Sonny or John Gray, uh, Jose Urquidy, um, Urquidy, however you say his name, Pablo Lopez, Charlie, Charlie Morton, like all of these guys are options. Like they're all fine. There's no reason to play. Adam Wayne right tonight. You know what I mean? Like it's fine. He, I will say he he's the fringe of where things get like that's yeah, the, but like and that's mention, the thing too, not, is it's like not an easy, easy fade like some of these other guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're absolutely right. That was probably a bad option. Cause like and even you look at somebody like George Kirby. Well, he led it up last game. The Jays have been struggling a little bit lately. It's obviously a tough matchup, but that's somebody with high upside as well. So I think if you're playing lots of lineups today, you can kind of take the opposite approach on this slate as one normally would and keep a big pitching pool, get five to 10% of a bunch of them and keep a pretty tight uh, batting pool today. Because obviously, although it's baseball and it's a big slate, anyone can finish up on top. We do kind of have a pretty clear tier of top offenses today. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I mean you've you've hammered it or touched on it already. Like this pitching is going to be pretty condensed. You don't have to be too worried about ownership. I don't think on any one guy. I would expect it to be more condensed than what we currently have projected with some of these lower currently some of these lower guys soaking up more ownership. I I would be a little bit surprised if we saw anybody top twenty percent on this slate. Um, if it is, it is the guys that we currently have up there with Giolito and Ashby just because of the matchups. Like people see Detroit, people see Pittsburgh, um, fall in love with that, especially Ashby at only 6,800. Um, but yeah, I don't think you have to worry too much about condensed pitching ownership on the slate at all. So, yeah. Well, yeah, let, you, you mentioned talk offenses. So we think pitching is going to be spread out, but we think, you know, there's some, some offenses that might soak up on some ownership. Who or what are those offenses? So the big two, I think, today that are going to be picking up the most ownership will be New York and Atlanta. And those are also the two top offenses on the board. So I think it's uh, it's pretty deserved that they're going to be up top there. Um, It's also a 15 slate, so I don't think we're going to have to worry too, too much about crazy ownership today. Like I it's same thing with batters. I don't know if we're going to see anybody today over. 20, 25% owned. Like I'm sure we're going to get our Max Muncy who's peren- perennially underpriced and our Acunas and judges pushing the 20%. Um, but on such a big slate, I don't think we're going to have to worry about it too much today. And that's kind of why I just like targeting the top offenses on the board. I'm going to be playing New York. I'm going to be playing Atlanta. I'm going to be playing uh, the Dodgers. Um, I'm going to be, if when I need to save salary, I'm going to be uh, mixing in Arizona. Um, and that's kind of how I want to go about this slate. I'm going to mix up my pitchers and I'm going to target the top offenses. Yeah, I think we need to start a petition to get Muncie above 3K on, on FanDuel. It's like this 26 to 28 range nonstop. And he started off terrible. It's been a bit better of late. Um, but it's almost like, do you, how, how long have you been, been playing on FanDuel? Um for baseball like three years okay so basketball way back in the day it would almost basketball become... been about like six seven eight years so st- pricing was very stale they've gotten a lot better with it on changing these guys pricing it used to be like slates almost get and, and baseball is completely different again because the variance of the sport you can justifably fade any high on guy it's just the strategy of the sport 
Whereas basketball, the pricing would be so stale at times where it would just be the same slate over and over and over again because you would just be forced to play this low-owned guy. And that's almost what it feels like with Muncie. But again, it's baseball, so you, you don't have to lock him in by any stretch. You do not have to play a high-owned Muncie. Uh, but I, I, I do want his price <laughs> increase just so he, he, uh, he stops hitting the, the, the high end of projected ownership here. I'd like him down in the range a little bit. Um, that's yeah, my, that's my right another another player. weird one we've seen lately is uh, is Trout. Like, why, I'm not really sure why we've seen this price decrease with him. Yeah, under four K. He's six he's six hundred dollars less than Alvarez, uh, five hundred less than Acuna, four hundred less than Judge. Yeah, he hasn't been great lately, but like, just look a little bit down that game log. It's his baseball. He'll he'll go five, six, seven, eight games, not doing well. And then he's going to hit five home runs in five games. That's, that's just how it works. Um, yep. So he's another guy that's ridiculously underpriced. Muncie and Trout are probably the very first two. You're kind of plugging into cash games today. Um, but I also think that we're not going to see ridiculously concentrated ownership. So you can still play an angels, y- angels, Yankees mix in your Trout's, uh, mix in sorry Braves and Yankees and mix in your Trouts and as long as you're not doing that with Lucas Giolito or Aaron Ashby you're you're probably going to be okay today yeah so do you worry uh, about um, using guys like Trout or Muncie as one-offs at at this ownership if if you're let's say you're doing what you think is going to be a chalkier New York Yankee stack like a a, maybe a 4-2 with the with the Yankees and Braves um, would you be a little weary to, to throw Muncie in there or do you not care that much? So Muncie less so than Trout just because second base lately has just been terrible. And so if I take a look at the position here on FanDuel today, second base, we got... Yeah, it's not that great again. It's not that great, but I guess you also do have the possibility for your LeMayhews and your Torres's in stacks. Um, I can't see Torres' name. Do they switch his position, or is he just super cheap? I think they might have. Oh, or or we're not projecting him. Did he? He might have left a game injured. Okay, so yeah, we're not projecting. So if Torres is in at second right now, he's a good option there. But just because second is pretty gross, I I don't really mind getting Muncy there just because he's so cheap and he's just a lot better than the plays around him. Like. Javi Baez, I guess, if you want to uh, pivot off the chalk, uh, is fine. But I don't really want to play one of these uh, one of these St. Louis guys against Zach Wheeler, and I don't really want to play um, Jeff McNeil against Pablo Lopez. If for right. some reason, if for some reason we get uh, George Springer out again and Espinal is leading off, then maybe he's interesting. But it's just an ugly, ugly position. So um, I don't mind going to Muncie as a one-off. It's actually, if I'm running a Dodgers stack, that's actually where I use, I, I like trying to get off of him. Um, okay. it, and because if I'm playing Dodgers anyways, I don't mind just saving even more salary and going down to Gavin Lux um, just because he's going to have a 10th of the ownership that Muncie has. Um, he's not that much worse of a play, but he's got a lot less power. So he's a significantly... Um, inferior one-off but in a stack when he just has to get on base for guys like Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman to hit him home I don't I don't mind that one bit so I'm actually more inclined to play Muncie as a one-off than I am in a stack um and then a guy like Trout if I land on him as a one-off in the outfield I'm never going to be upset with getting Mike Trout as a one-off um but looking in the range today kind of seeing Juan Soto, Julio Rodriguez, and George Springer at the same price. Byron Buxton, 200 cheaper. Uh, Stanton, 200 cheaper. If he is going to be the chalkiest uh, outfielder today, I don't mind uh, finding another one of these phenomenal hitters to pivot off of them with. Yeah, I agree with all that. Um, you mentioned kind of the, the general weakness of the second base position, um, which brings me to the Twins, who have two guys that are – pretty solid at this position. Um, I don't know if I'm buying the John Gray, like reemergence, like his his numbers have been good. His underlying stats are good. Um, But if we start building stacks based on some decent second base options, um, Minnesota's offense, typically like they're, 
they're really good offensively. Obviously, we know about what Bayern Buxton can do, um, Correa. So just having guys, be, having teams that you can do a middle infield stack and not vomit when you start your stack that way is like huge um, because oftentimes that middle infield just isn't overall, isn't very strong. Um, so, you know, being able to do Jorge Polanco, Carlos Correa, and then even adding Luis Arias at third base if you want to, um, whether you want to do that as a mini stack. Uh, again, it's not going to project as one of the best stacks on the night. Uh, and certainly John Gray has not been bad at all this season. Uh, he's actually been pretty good. Uh, but I do like the the Twins as kind of a an really sneaky stack on this slate. Probably not a huge high prob- huge probability of actually hitting, uh, but they, they have enough power in their lineup where I do like them a, a little bit. Well, and I think something that's interesting too is you don't have to full stack them. You can mini stack yeah. them. And you brought up the second base position. You can get Polanco or uh, Arias in there. Well, it does. We also have an underpriced Buxton, and it does make it kind of interesting. Um, you could get very, very different without sacrificing much doing a Yankees or Atlanta stack. And you you have your Riley, Swanson, Olsen in there. You got your Polanco or Arias in at second base. And maybe you sub sub Buxton in for Acuna. And you get a cheaper Atlanta guy in there for your fourth uh, person in the stack. You have Buxton who can match the upside of Acuna. Even though it's not as good of a matchup, he's going to be a lot less owned and he's almost as good of a player. Um, So uh, you get Buxton to match that upside and you're going to be a lot different than the field. Right. Or even just in non-stacks, Buxton over Trout. Something like, again, Trout, Acuna, better plays. We're not going to argue that there. You know, if we had to pick one, we would we would pick Trout or Acuna. We wouldn't pick Buxton, but a lot of it has to come down or do deal with lineup instruction. Um, is how a lot of these tournaments are won. Um, so you know, when a, when one of those high owned guys fails and Buxton has this double home run game, you're sitting pretty when something like that happens. Uh, do you have any other sneaky stacks you want to talk about real quick before we head out? Um. So the tough thing today is like. The Yankees will pick up ownership. Atlanta will pick up ownership. Dodgers will. Arizona will. And the White Sox will. Those are probably my top five stacks. The White Sox will probably be the sneakiest of the bunch. And they're also the one I like the least of the bunch. So it is kind of tough. White Sox aren't going to be chalky enough that you have to worry about it. They're just going to be probably appropriately owned for their chance of success. Um, Houston, I kind of like. It's just... It's a tough ballpark. Um, Like the next teams I'm looking at are like the Milwaukee's Baltimore's angels. And I just don't really like any of them. Maybe in very large field stuff. I think the next two teams I'd be looking at uh, would be Seattle and Milwaukee as like my very sneaky large field stuff. But if I'm playing one to five teams today, I'm going to be sticking in the New York, Atlanta, Dodgers, Arizona range. Yeah, I think that White Sox call is, is sneaky enough too. Um, perhaps the the addition or the um, Eloy Jimenez being called back or returning from the IL goes a, a tad bit overlooked, although he did hit a home run yesterday in his first game back. But, you know, the bottom half of their order is not great, but like, they have a ton of power. Um, Robert, Robert, Abreu, Anderson, yeah. Jimenez, Vaughn. Those Vaughn, five guys yeah. make for a phenomenal stack. Like you pick four of those five, and it's it's just very interesting. So yeah, I don't I don't hate that one bit. Um, they project well. They they probably won't be very highly owned. Scooball's been struggling. It's just one of those things that it's a bit of an internal. Ah, the White Sox have bit me in the butt a lot lately. Right. And yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm on plate IQ now. Um, I mean, just look at the ISOs of some of these guys versus left-handed pitching the, the last two years. Um, unreal. <laughs> to, uh, this Vaughn, year, what's Pollock's? I swear Pollock hasn't hit anything more than a single in like eight This years. year? Let me see. I'll this switch year. to this year and see. <laughs> That's what I was on initially. Paul, no, he's yeah, still in small sample size, sample size yeah. but he's still doing okay with lefties. So Maybe he's yeah. uh, maybe he's somewhat interesting today too. Yeah, um, so I can get on board with that too. Scooball is kind of um, 
struggled lately. Again, so I mean, honestly, it's perfect though. Like you look at this lineup. So this is why we're okay with taking either the White Sox as a as a stack or Scooball as a pitcher too, right? You probably a little bit less so than me with with Scooball. Uh, he would be a little bit deeper tournaments, but this is, I mean, this is the perfect lineup for it, right? Like home runs or strikeouts. That's exactly yeah. what you want on both sides. Um, that's what you want out of your pitcher and that's what you want out of your sacks as well. So yeah, I, I think this game could go a little bit overlooked and I like both sides of it quite a bit. And we talked about teams with lots of middle infield stacking options, like the Dodgers and like the Braves, like the Yankees, and then even the twins as a mini stack. Well, where are the guys that you want to play for the White Sox? They're in first base in the outfield or short. So they maybe will be a little tough to pair with the Braves, but uh, they will make a great um, secondary stack with the Yankees or the Dodgers. Yep, I love that. Um, Honestly, I kind of want to end on that because I want to I want to hype the White Sox love. Um, Do you have any any hot takes you want to end on? No, not in particular today. I think we can look at the opposite approach as we usually do because in a vacuum, yes, it's always better to differentiate in bats than it is at pitchers. But today we have a huge clump of guys in the same pool projection-wise and any one of them could finish up top. So the way to get leverage on the field today is by simply realizing no one deserves to pick up heavy ownership. So if somebody is, that's where we're pivoting off of. Yep. Good call. Um, that's going to do it though for today's FanDuel Friday. Uh, as always, thanks for tuning in. And I think both of us will be back next week uh, for another edition. See you guys. Oh, <laughs>